Hello and welcome guys to our last session. I mean the last topic for this responsive web design certification before we proceed to the responsive web design project. So let's start. Okay, the introduction to the CSS grid challenge. Yes, so CSS grids helps you easily build complex web design. So this is more complex than the display grid last time so it works by turning an html element into grid container with rows and columns so for you to place children elements where you want within the grid so let's go to the first lesson create your first css grid so okay so for this challenge let's change the display of the div with a container class to grid display grid Nothing's happening right now because uh, later we'll know. Okay. Um, add columns with the grid, grid template columns. So simply creating grid element doesn't give, get you very far. You need to define the structure of the grid as well. So to add some columns to the grid, use the grid template columns property on the grid container as demonstrated below. So this one so this will give you the grid columns 50 pixels wide each the number of parameter given to the grid template columns property indicates the number of column in the grid and the value of each parameter indicates the width of each column so give the grid container three columns that are each 100 pixels wide i think i already answered this one Next, add rows with grid template rows. I think I already answered this one also, but I resetted, resetted it, resetted, resetted. Yep, there is a no, 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 no. I already reset it. Add two rows to the grid that are 50 pixels tall each grid template rows with 50 pixels pixels tall use css grid units to change the size of columns and rows so i already answered this one too if you're that lazy enough, um, you can pause this video and uh, read these things. Oops, container class should have a grid template columns property that has three columns with the following widths. So I haven't changed this one to the instructions. QFR. Okay, create a column gap using grid column gap. Give the columns in the grid a 20 pixels gap. Grid column gap. The reason, guys, why I all, why I answered several challenges is that I didn't click record earlier again, so it's a little bit annoying, but. If you see a check sign here, it's already answered earlier, so I'm not gonna, you know, read the instructions again. So create a gap for the rows that is 5 pixels tall. Grid row gap is 5 pixels. Okay, grid gap. is 10 pixels for the rows and 20 pixels for the columns so grid gap is a shorthand for grid row gap so this is why where i ended before i realized that i haven't um clicked the record button so let's try to read the in instructions use grid column to control spacing up to this point all the properties that have been discussed 
are for grid containers. The grid column properties, the first one for use on the grid items themselves. The hypo hypothetical horizontal and vertical lines that create the grid are referred to as lines. So these lines are numbered starting with 1 at the top left corner of the grid and move right for columns and down for rows, counting upward. This is what the lines look like for a 3x3 three three grid. 3x3 three three grid, so it has 4 lines that consumes 3x3 three three grid. Amazing. Control the amount of columns an item will consume. You can use the grid column property in conjunction with the line numbers you want the item to start and stop at. Here's an example. One fish. So, this will make the item start the first vertical line of the grid on the left and span to the third line of the grid consuming two columns. So make the item with the class item 5 consume the last two columns to the grid. So I already answered that. 2, two out of 2 divided by 4. Should 1 half work? Nope. Because <laughs> I thought it's a fraction. Anyway. Use grid row to control spacing. Of course, you can make items consume multiple rows just like you can with columns. So, you define the horizontal lines you want an item to start and stop at using the grid row property on a grid item. Make the element with the item 5 class consume the last two rows. Grid row. So, this is a 3x3 three three grid. Align an item horizontally using justify self. In CSS grid, the content of each item is located in a box which is referred to a cell. This one our cell. You can align the content position with it, its cell horizontally using the justify self property on a grid item. By default, this property has a value of stretch, which will make the content fill the whole width of the cell. So the CSS grid property accepts other values as well. Start aligns the content with the cell center, aligns the content center, and so yeah. Use the justify cell property to center the item with the class item 2. <sighs> Next, align an item vertically using line self. Similar as earlier one, align the item with the class item 3 vertically at the end. Item 3. So, justify self end. Okay, we're gonna use the align. Align all items horizontally using justify items. Sometimes you want all the items in your CSS grid to share the same alignment. You can use the previously learned properties and align them individually or you can align them all at once horizontally by using justify items on your grid container. On your grid container. So this property can accept all the same values you learned about in the previous two challenges. The difference between being that it will move all the items in a grid to the desired alignment. Use this property to center all our al horizontal. Use this property to center all our items horizontally. So justify item center. Using the align items property on a grid will set the vertical alignment for the Okay, align items to the end. Divide the grid into an area template. Wow. I'm gonna take a screenshot for this one. I don't know this too. Divide the grid into an area template. 
you can group cells of your grid together into an area and give the area a custom name. Do this by using grid template areas on a container like this. The code above merges the top three cells together into an area named header, the bottom three cells into a footer area, and it makes two area in the middle row. Every word in the code represents a cell and every pair of quotation marks it represents a row. In addition to custom labels, you can use a period to designate an empty cell in the grid. Place the area template so that the cell label at birth becomes an empty cell. I didn't know what happened so I'm gonna content. Uh, let's just skip this for now. Place items in grid areas using the grid area property. Grid area header. So, place an element with the item 5 class in the footer area using the grid area property. Grid area would be the footer. Oh. So that's the use case of the grid template areas. Use grid area without creating an areas templates. Okay, it's getting complicated now. The grid area property you learned in the last challenge can be used in another way. If your grid doesn't have an areas templates to reference, you can create an area on the fly for an item to be placed like this. One, one, two, four. This is using the line numbers you learned about earlier to define where the area for this item will be. The numbers in the example above represent these values. Horizontal line to start at, vertical line to start at, the end at, the end at. So the items in the example will consume the rows between lines 1 and 2 and the columns between lines 1 and 4. Using the grid area property, place the item class between the third and fourth horizontal lines and between the first and fourth vertical line. Okay, let's try this one. Grid area. Okay, so the item in the example will change the rows between lines 1 and 2. Between third and fourth horizontal line. So the item in the example will consume the rows between lines 1 and 2 and the columns between lines 1 and 4 um, with the grid error property between the third. third and fourth horizontal lines. Third and fourth horizontal lines and first and fourth. Okay. Reduce repetition using the repeat function. So when you use grid template columns and grid template rows to define the structures of a grid, you enter the value for each row or column you created. Let's say you want a grid with 100 rows of the same height. It isn't very pra practical to insert 100 values individually. Fortunately, there's a better way by using the repeat function. So to specify the number of times you want 
your column or row to be repeated followed by a comma and the value you want to repeat. Here's an example that would create the 100 row grid. Each row at 50 pixels tall. So grid template rows, repeat 150 pixels. You can use multiple values here in the insert function amongst other values with defining grid structure. The 1FR fraction 50 pixels is repeated twice. Okay, use repeat to remove repetition from grid templates column property. Okay. comment out this one grid template columns is repeat 3 and then 1 fr next challenge limit item size using the min max function so there's another built-in function to use with grid template columns and grid template rows called min max it's used to limit the size of items with the grid and Grid container changes size. So to do this, you need to specify the acceptable size range for your item. Here is an example. So in the code above, grid template columns is set to create two columns. The first is 100 pixels wide, and the second is the, you know, minimum width of 50 pixels and the maximum width of 200 pixels. Using the min max function, replace the 1fr in the repeat function with a column size that has a minimum width of 90 pixels. So this one is a width and this one is the maximum width. Minimum width, maximum width. So, okay. Replace the fr in the repeat function with the column size. Min max is 90 pixels and 1 fr and resize the preview panel to see the effect so yeah how about earlier Let's try to do it again. Min max um, 90 pixels 1 FR. I don't see the difference, guys. Let's just run the tests. <laughs> Create flexible layouts using the upper fill. So create flexible. In the first grid, use auto fill with repeat to the to fill the grid with columns that have minimum width of 60 pixels. And maximum Okay, auto fill. Okay, get it, get it, get it. What is the error? Container class should have a grid template columns property with repeat and auto fill. Okay, auto fill. <laughs> the hyphen is missing. Create flexible layouts using auto fit. Okay. Auto fill and auto fit. Okay, this grid template columns is making my headache. Auto fit works I almost identically to auto fill. The only difference is that when the container size exceeds the size of all the items combined, auto fill keeps inserting empty rows or columns and pushes your items to the side. 
while out of fit collapses those empty rows or columns and stretches your items to fit the size of the container. If your container can fit all your items on one row, it will move them down to a new one. In the second grid, use auto fit with repeat to fill the grid with columns that have a maximum width of 60 pixels. Auto fit. Then resize the preview. Okay. We're 91% and let's do this boys. Use media queries to create responsive layouts. CSS grid can be an easy way to make your site more responsive by using media queries to rearrange grid areas. Change dimensions of a grid and rearrange the placement of items. In the preview, when the viewport width is 300 pixels or more, the number of columns change from 1 and 2. The advertisement the advertisement area that then occupies the left column completely. When the viewport width is 400 pixels or more, make the header occupy the top row completely and the footer area occupy the bottom row completely. Let's change this header. Oh, amazing motherfuckers. Oops, sorry. Um, it's like just amazing, so sorry about the word. I'm not familiar with CSS grids. So, yeah. When the viewport is 400 pixels or more, container class should have a grid template areas property in which the header and footer. Okay, so the footer too. Footer. Nice. And tests and submit and go to the next challenge. Create grids within grids. No. Turning an element into grid only affects the behavior of its direct descendant. So by turning a direct descendant into a grid, you have a grid within a grid. For example, by setting this display and grid templates column properties of the element within the item tree class, you create a grid within your grid. Turn the element with the item tree class into grid with two columns and the width of auto F and display grid template columns. So we're gonna add a display grid template columns I'm not sure if I got that correctly let's try to read it again turn the element with the item tree class into a grid with two columns with the width of auto Okay, so let's try to add the grid and then grid template columns of auto 1fr okay that's that's it okay it's very complicated to me for me i i mean uh it's finished but it I think to myself that I have a lot of I have a lot to learn regarding grids. So thanks for watching and let's go to the next challenge next time. Bye.